Hey Tom, these are your carburetors I've got I have uh, finished for you and we're getting ready to do a, an actual real-time test here for you and give you some helpful hints. Uh, check our carburetor numbers 82511 and over here we've got 82484. And hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there we go. 82484. These are your carburetors. Put this back on the tripod. Now then, just you know, this is an actual cold test. Check that out 42 degrees out here. Now, these are definitely cold soaked carburetors. Now then, let's see, let's go over some mounting first. Um, you're going to, I'm going to give you mounting instructions certainly, but what you're going to do is uh, mount these carburetors loosely to where they, they uh, are attached to the carb, uh, to the engine, but they can slip up and down a little bit, they have a little bit of slop up and down. And the reason for that is you want to put your air log in place and move the carburetors around to where the air log will line up. I'm going to put the studs in later on, but uh, so the air log slips in place and at that point uh, you will attach your air log, say with uh, two to four screws or nuts on each carburetor so that the air log is attached to the carbs and the carbs are uh, in line with the air log. Then go in and secure your carburetors at the top here with uh, the nuts at the top and then Pull the air, pull the air log off, and finish your finish securing the uh, carburetors underneath. Um, and your best way to do that is like with a quarter-inch drive universal uh, socket does a great job in a situation like that. And then when you're going to be hooking up here, you will be hooking up the fuel line. One of the things you want to remember is to hold this fitting in the float bolt cover stationary and do all your turning up here. You don't want to twist on this little guy at all because that will ruin the threads right here. And let's see what else we're going to be discussing here. Uh, your responsibility will be to get all your linkage uh, links taken care of and at the very last you will be adjusting this linkage with the turnbuckle to fit the actual center to center right here and uh, that's why there's a turnbuckle here so you can adjust precisely uh, where you need the um, linkage to to be um I'm trying to think what else I'm, uh, fuel fuel uh, fuel filtration is very important for these carburetors they do not like dirty fuel so i recommend an extra inline fuel filter um, in between the original fuel filter and the fuel pump Let's see, um, all the machine work has been done, new throttle shafts, new bushings, new throttle plates, butterflies, uh, all, the, all the flat surfaces have been machined, we've got helicoils, um, everything's been gold or, or number two or yellow CAD plated like the original, and uh, these carburetors are really, really magnificent. Now then, up here on the top we've got the idle mixture screws. This is the uh, only screw that you will be using to adjust the carburetors. This one over here on the second barrel is a dummy. Don't, you don't need to mess with it, it doesn't do anything. Other adjustments you'll be working with will be your um, idle uh, screw to adjust the idle. I'll do that for you, but you can then adjust it up and down if you so choose. Depends on your mood. Uh, one of the best ways to adjust these carburetors is with a synchrometer. Okay, it's called a synchrometer, and the size that you want is going to be BK1 to 35 kilograms per hour. That's the uh, designation that you look for on uh, eBay or Amazon, wherever, and this thing right out of the box fits perfectly on these carburetors. And that's the greatest uh, expenditure, the greatest tool that you get for the least amount of money. 
Uh, let's see, adjustments here. Everything's going to be adjusted, and uh, you won't have to do anything except really kind of check, double check the uh, idle mixture screws to make sure the carburetors are working their best with your engine. Now, obviously, I'm tuning them to my engine. Uh, one other uh, item that you can check is once you get your uh, idle uh, taken care of, is you make sure that these you have some play between the second barrel and the first barrel, and that is controlled by the set screw right here and his jam screw. And what you want is, is when you move this, let's see if you can see that, yeah. When you move that, you can move it just a smidge because what this follower does is to artificially close the second barrel uh, when it's open. And you want to make sure that that is adjusted to where it will close, the it will act on the second barrel, but it's not so tight that it's the, uh, you can actually screw this in too far to where the second barrel is artificially opening the first barrel. Oops, sorry, about, sorry about that. Anyway. Let's see if we can test some carburetors now. Uh, obviously, you will have made sure you got fuel in the um, and at the fuel pump. You'll you'll you do the priming lever on your fuel pump. Make sure your fuel your float bowls are, are level are full, and then you'll um uh, sorry I'm, I'm my words are not coming easily. I'm getting cold. <laughs> um, and then uh, maybe a, a goose the throttle once. And then we will go in and activate the choke. As you can see, we have full choke, both both carburetors, and <laughs> maybe if I give me two. Gooses with the with the with the uh, accelerator might have started a little bit quicker, but for as cold as it is, that's not bad. Now notice when I'm activating the the choke, that I'm actually moving the throttle, physically opening the throttle, just like you're putting on your pushing on the gas. And what controls that is a little teeny set screw way in the back. I'm, a, I'm trying to keep the engine going and point to it. This guy right here, that little teeny set screw, and that is supposed to be set with 15 thousandths clearance. And uh, I will adjust that for you, but you can also double check it. But that's what dictates how far open the throttle is when you activate the choke like this. So what we're going to do now is uh, get this thing warmed up because you cannot adjust the carburetor until you've got the engine warmed up. Until we get some temperature on the gauge here. Man, it is cold out here.
see the you can see the thermostat just opened. Ah, now what way I tune these is we've got a um I've got my um engine analyzer over here. Alright. And we're gonna tune them with the uh, using the idle. Get our best idle speed with the idle mixture screws and then also for fun we're gonna see how low we can get the engine to idle. So right now, obviously I've already adjusted everything, but right now we are on the low on the high scale. Alright, the high scale is right. Uh, here we go. Alright, high scale is right here. RPM. And we're reading this 500, 6, 700. So we'll go to low scale and confirm that. Running about 700. Now then, first thing you're going to do is check your airflow. Alright, check your airflow through the carburetors. You want the second barrel to be closed off at idle, and that's where the wonderful machine work comes in. And uh, factory settings usually will give you uh, an indicate uh, reading of two. And what we want is to duplicate or exceed factory settings, uh, factory spec, and we're going to get two or less. And I know that's going to be the case because I've already checked it. And you'll notice right there that needle hardly even moved. All right. Less than two, and over here, see the needle hardly moved. Well, it's not true. It didn't hardly move. It's what one and a half, almost two, and that's due to the second barrel butterfly seating properly, and that that one. So I just uh, now that. All right, now we got the accurate reading there, but less than two. And then the next thing you're going to do, to do is disconnect the carburetor linkage so that these carburetors are running independently of each other. Can't adjust them if the throttle linkage is goofing you up. So what I do is I hold on to the linkage here so that the, I don't get a runaway carburetor. And we're going to go in and we're going to start the, adjusting our idle speed and the amount of air being drawn through the carburetor. So right here, we can see we're right at 6. And over here, I let go of this throttle or momentarily. And right here, we're also at 6 or, or so. Obviously, I've already been in here. Now, if you don't like the idle at that speed, what we're going to do is we're going to screw in the idle set screw it and then we're going to get, jack up the idle. So like I showed you before we're at about 700. So let's say we want to go to 800 uh, as an idle. So what we'll do is we'll screw these screws in about the same amount of each screw. I'm doing a quarter turn on these guys right here. So we got a quarter turn. We come back here and we will check to see our flow. So now we are up to up to Seven. See if I can get in here and show you a little bit better. We're up to seven, let's say, and over here. We're up to seven. Uh, obviously, they, they both screw in the same amount and should adjust the carburetor the same amount. Now we come down here to our idle. And you can see we now have an idle of, uh, of 800. 750 to 800. And what I'd probably do is leave it right there for you. Uh, well, I will set it at that point. But just for fun, just for fun, let's see how low this thing will idle. And that's all a function of machine work. So what we're going to do is back off on the idle screws here. Just back off a half a turn here. And over here. Half a, let's see, let's move this over a little bit so you see a little bit better. Back up over here, half a turn here. Alright, uh, 
uh, indicated about 650 idle. So let's do another quarter turn here, quarter turn here. Indicated we got about 550 idle. Let's go a little bit more. Quarter turn, quarter turn. Let's check our airflow. Uh, it's hard to do with. All right. So what we're gonna do is we've got the airflow here of three and a half. Airflow over here. Three and a half. And we got an indicated RPM of about 450. Yeah, it's going to be four, about 450 right here. That's pretty damned impressive. It is very, very impressive. Now, just for fun, let's see if we can go even lower. Eighth of a turn on that screw, eighth of a turn on that screw. We're indicated, we got an indicated idle speed of 400 RPM. Now, I'm going to hook the linkage back up. Along at 400, actually a little bit less, three, about 400. Now, which is very hard to do because fuel is is very heavy. The air, air fuel mixture is physically heavy, and we very we're drawing very little air in here to to pull the heavy air fuel mixture in. So just for fun. How about that? That is a tractable, seriously nice carburetor that is tractable from approximately, well now we're up to about 500, 450, 500. So, tractable from, well, 375, 400. Now, before we die, let's go ahead and crank up the idle. Get you back up to 800. Once again, we will disconnect the throttle linkage. And we will get an indicated 800 with the airflow being the same in each carburetor. So there's six. Let's bring it up to about seven. I think we had it at it was 800 RPM. And here's there's seven. And have an indicated 800 RPM. Well, it's a little bit less than that. 750, 800, so that's that's fine for an idle. Now then, the last thing we're going to do is our idle mixture screw adjustment. And we get this right here. And what we're going to do is we will check our RPM. You can do this by hearing, but you can also do it by um, uh, checking the RPM. But what we're going to do is we're going to screw this in until the idle degrades and then back it out into the idle degrades and get the midpoint where the car the engine runs the best. Here it's starting to degrade. I'm gonna go too far. Okay. Didn't want to go too far. Now we're gonna back out the other way. Now it's starting to degrade once again. See what happens when it starts getting too far out? Okay, so that's a demonstration of the extremes. Now we will find the midpoint where it runs the best without going without going this far out. You don't need to go that far out. You can hear the difference when it starts drawing too much air fuel through the throat. That's in too far. Now what we're going to do, while I do this up here, it's going to be down here watching our idle. See where we get our best idle. So I'm going to screw it in. You'll be able to see the uh, idle start to degrade even before you can hear it. So now we're going to back it out. Picking up idle. So 
we don't want to go too far out so we're going to leave it right about there same thing over here with this carburetor once again you can hear the idle degrading and back it out come down here see the idle degrading now we're going to come back out get our best idle Not going too far. See, we picked up some RPM there. Now we're going to have fun blipping the throttle. Oh, also the last thing you want to do is you want to be able to you want to adjust the throttle linkage to where this just pops in place and nothing happens. Nothing adjusts. Now, if we popped it, if we blipped the throttle and we had um, a backfire through the carburetors that would be too lean and that would mean you needed to just uh, keep adjusting working with the screw right here let's double check our idle okay we picked up uh, some idle speed by making those uh, fine adjustments at the 900 so I'm going to back it off to where we're at 800 also probably the carburetors are warming up as well okay so once again we've got a throttle disconnected and we're going to start backing off on the idle screws by quarter turn Move another turn another turn all right now we're going to check our airflow we're at five and a half six Five and a half to six over here. A little bit below five and a half, so we're gonna pick this one up on the first barrel. Let's see. Let's, let's make them both six while we're here. almost six now the actual number doesn't matter we just want to make sure they're both the, the both the same this one is just a smidge under so we're going to pick it up just about a 64th of a turn there okay a little bit more all right that's running six that's running very nice, and I uh, got an indicated R I RPM again, back down here, between 750 and uh, 800, so that's where we want to be, and come back here, once again we make sure our linkage is adjusted such that when we snap it in place nothing happens, and... Nice running carburetors, really nice. Excuse me. Oh, very nice. Okay, so you got a really nice set of carburetors. Now, one other thing we're gonna I want to go over a little bit on the choke mechanism. Um, as you can see, this choke works fine. I have them tied together uh, because um, this is the main choke lever and this is a slave to it and it just kind of flops around point is what you want to be able to do is operate your choke just like this and just like this and if you ever need to test the choke just to, for function just activate it and then come over here and flip it like this you just want to make sure these things are loose and returning that's all and they're they're sloppy loose from the factory they're supposed to be sloppy loose and that's so they will function now then, be sure to double check your choke cable on the dash and all the way, you know, got, you got three feet of choke cable coming into this point right here. So make sure your choke cable is oiled, the uh, rod, the steel cable inside the sheath cable. And then um, 
you're going to um, run into the problem, uh, well not the problem, but it's a design feature. Okay, so you got your choke cable coming straight down on the intake manifold, attaching to these choke levers, and of course the choke levers want to go up like this in an arc, coming up like this in an arc, but the cable is pulling straight up, so you'll find that you have a whole bunch of uh, extra bind as you uh, pull up on the uh, cable because of the design. Well, at the same time you're doing that, remember, you're activating your choke lever right here. You're actually pulling all the, ch uh, I'm sorry, you're activating the throttle linkage. And you're pulling all the throttle linkage from here all the way here, all the way up to your um, gas pedal. So that's why your choke it will feel stiff. So you need to do everything you can to lubricate the choke cable and make sure it's as smooth, smooth as it can be it can be because once it's in service it, it gets a little stiff but these are absolutely fabulous carburetors and i know they're going to give you um, an awful lot of uh, driving enjoyment thank you very much for your patience